Welcome to part two with my guest, Amira Hall. In this episode, she's going to talk about her work, including her three books, Love Up Your Life, Manifesting Miracles 101, and The Essential Guide to Spiritual Awakening. Welcome back, Amira. Thank you so much, Jill. What a fun day this is. Yes, we have so much to cover. You have so much information to share with my listeners. And I think, you know, I'm looking at two of these books, Love Up Your Life and Manifesting Miracles 101. This is content everybody wants to know more about. Everybody's been sequestered and cloistered due to COVID for the last couple of years, and they're just a little scared to get out there and find love. But you have some information and inspiration from your book, Love Up Your Life, and from testimony of clients regarding finding love. Do you want to share that with our listeners? I, I'd be very happy to, but I want to just say that these books are a culmination of my spiritual awakening and my journey. I love of it. trying to figure it out for myself. And after my near-death experience, I was really thrown in, thrown to the wolves. I didn't know what happened to me, and I had to figure it out. I knew something happened, and I wasn't the same. But and on this journey, I went to probably 10 different psychics and healers and and different I didn't dare go see a psychologist because I thought they are going to deem me crazy going to lock me up and throw away the key and I knew I wasn't that I could barely function in my job at the time but in the journey they all told me something different they all told me well you died well no you didn't but you went really really far and so I had to figure it out I had to dive deep within me yes and in my journey of healing myself of, of the dysfunctional family situation I grew up with and some of the p- religious programming and, and, and all of the things that I had accumulated. See, in my near-death experience, I learned several things. One, that love is the fabric of all creation. Yes. I, and I learned that absolutely everything is that. And to this day, I still struggle and try to, you know, um, intellectualize that. But it's not an intellectual process. It's a feeling. It's a vibration that permeates all things. And so I understood that. But what I also got to see, um, and people are going to have to buy my book because I didn't share how I got to this part and what the, I, the ascended masters and what I saw and what was revealed to me. But the second most important thing is that energy along the way, along my, it was like I saw a timeline. That was my review. And, and it showed me that when I have stuck energy or fears right, or fear. doubts, fear is a or, big one. Or, right. Well, all of these low vibrations of anger, of, of confusion, of criticism and judgment, all those low vibrations got stuck on my timeline. And those are the things that made me sick with my autoimmune challenges, with my dysfunctional relationship issues, with all of those issues I was facing, it was caused by stuck energy. And that to me was incredibly liberating, simple and powerful because I'm like, great, now what do I do? So you, you tell me what what's wrong and give me a solution, then I can fix it, right? Doesn't that make sense? Right. So you went back through your own personal timeline and saw times in your life when you had what you call stuck energy or maybe traumatic experience, and that made the energy stuck, and then you figured out a way to free it up. What I learned were tools. I learned from my near-death experience how to apply the quantum physics at the time, in 1998, I don't even think Deepak Chopra was talking about his quantum physics and, and quantum mechanics and the notions of that. But when I did find his book, I remember going, that's it. That's what I downloaded was this information. And then I created these tools. That is what Love Up Your Life is, 10 simple steps, using these tools to clear your energy to become a super magnetic. I love it. I, called it. I called it Love Up Your Life because it's kind of a trick because everybody's looking for love out there. Right. But truly, it's, it's, a, it's an inside job. You've got to heal yourself, refine your vibration, then you'll attract somebody that you want to be with, not, not like 
your soulmate that's not. <laughs> well, you won't attract from your wound. You'll attract from your heart. Perfectly said. Absolutely. So you have and tools. A whole different. Yeah. So, so that's what that book is. And it explains it in a very simple process and guides you through how to do that. And if you practice the simple steps and, and one of the super magnifiers, it's a free gift. Everybody can go to my website. It's called stress buster. It's a combination of those tools that I teach that it will get people driving through the process immediately. Oh, I because love that. It's like an energy shower. We just got to start letting go, folks. Just let go. Well, and people need to do practices. And this sounds like you're, there's an offering here where they can actually do some work on themselves through your stress buster. Again, they can find that on your website, amirahall.com. That's A-M-I-R-A-H. H A L L dot com, all one word. Yeah, so you have this this actual technique or an actual system that will help them. And it's easy peasy. Just follow along. Everything will make sense. And uh, then Manifesting Miracles 101 is a guidebook, actually. It's not one of those books that you'll pick up and, and uh, you know, read from chapter to chapter. It was actually created for my students um, to give them a reflection of what we're doing, because the work I do is experiential. I guide people through the process. We're not there taking active notes. You're not there to, you know, regurgitate more information. This is a whole different way of learning because it's an inside job and, and we're going to other dimensions. So it's when you jump out of it and keep having to read, it takes you out of that where you might get some juice, you know, the good stuff. Right. The meat of they the go issue. In, right. It's like keep them out of their head and in their body and in their heart. And, and the experiential is the way to teach. And I think we're going to see a shift back to that, especially now with the nodes and South Node and Scorpio and North Node and Taurus. Scorpio is all about have the experience, feel it, be it. Uh, and own it. Right. Because once you have that, it's, you become unshakable. Right. And this actually helps people connect with their own source of power and not look for, like you said earlier, a plug into an outside source. That's exactly the, the goal I, I have in my programs. And I am there to, I often say, I'm here to hold the ladder and you're going to climb it. I can just hold it for you and say, what, one foot up, another inch, another inch. There you go. You got it. And you keep climbing and climbing. You're over the rooftop and it can be scary. But sometimes we hit some rough spots and the ladder starts shaking so I'm there to stabilize and remove those blocks so you can keep climbing. Otherwise, you're going to stay at your default level. You're that, not going to break through that glass. That's ceiling. right. And it's really good to have a guide to help you as you start that ascent on the ladder. So that Manifesting Miracles book sounds excellent. And then your third book, The Essential Guide to Spiritual Awakening. Can you tell our listeners about that? Yeah, that's a culmination of my understanding of what the awakening is. Um, I've been, you know curious myself you know there's people that experts that you you, I'm sure as an astrologer you can explain it much better than I can I wanted to know from a simpleton (laughs) perspective what is it what what's going to feel like I remember um being on the balcony meditating in Egypt one time I think it was in 2009 and I was participating in a book called transforming through 2012 and beyond I wrote a chapter you know one of those compilation books and my guide came to me and he was standing, he, it, it was like an orb of light that was standing behind me. And, and I asked, what's this spiritual awakening all about? And the answer I got was this. Imagine today you're a caterpillar and tomorrow you're a butterfly. Oh, so it's like the same, you go through a metamorphosis, but you're at essence the same being, but you go through a transformation, a chrysalis. I was just talking about this today with a client, the butterfly cocoon. How beautiful. Yeah, that's a, that's, and I think that's a great metaphor for the process that people go through in their, their transformation. Well, imagine what, what life is like as a slug or a caterpillar inching along and you only eat what's in front of you and there's no... You know, you don't know the big, big world, right? It's just inch by inch, low to the ground, and you're hiding. And uh, and then being a butterfly, talk about freedom, talk about color, talk about expression and and curiosity. And so I just I just keep trying to feel that 
and no, that's it. And then the, my guide said, and beware, there will be many charlatans among you. That's true. They were there in the 90s. They were there in the 2000s. They were there in the 2010s. And they're here in the 2020s. Fake, and they're f- fake cranking shamans. Up, aren't they? Yeah, well, because the internet makes it easy. It's, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. In the 90s, you actually had to walk the walk and go and do the teachings. And you had to experience it. And you had to study with a teacher or a guide or you know, at least go and have the experiencing. These days, people get what I call fast food spirituality on the internet, Mm -hmm. and then they are a astrologer, or they are a (laughs) spiritual teacher or a spiritual coach. And as you and I know, that you can call yourself that after you have basically earned it by, and the wisdom that you've accumulated. So it's going to be interesting. I think, again, the node shifting to Scorpio is going to say, we need to see the proof in the pudding. You know, you can't just purport that you know something because you learned it off the internet. You have to actually show, show the depth of. The... And or got, you know, got, got an online certificate you know, right. or a weekend training. And, and, and so it is, you know, now you can make a business and, and uh yeah i applaud everybody doing that and there's right. no question we we're in this space of needing some more healers and guides but you know there's also a time to become discerning right of who you hook your star with i had that lesson with his name was um what what i good thing i forgot it yeah um, <laughs> we're not gonna the, the shaman from san diego good oh yeah thing. the unnamed I, I the unnamed shaman who shall not yeah, be he, named yeah <laughs> well he passed away because he would have been charged see there's a lot of spiritual teachers that i've encountered over the years especially well they have to have been male teachers because they they were you know in, inappropriately um attaching themselves to females and sort of hooking hooking females seducing them through the second chakra and all of a sudden they feel like oh i'm in love with you and next thing you know they're having an affair and right and blah 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 you know i don't want to go down that path but the old you know, bhagwan rajneesh or osho syndrome oh i've i've seen it wild myself, wild country yeah. did you the, yeah the, 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 I don't know if you but saw that documentary. Let's talk about real love. <laughs> yeah, let's talk, talk about, about true love. love and true spirituality. Y- you help your clients get into their heart. And how can listeners just easily shift their awareness into their heart? Self-love, self-awareness, self-awakening. What you is know, your advice? For me, it starts with energy. And, and it ends with energy. So that's why I'm giving away the stress buster, you know, a quick and easy drive through. Start flushing the energies, right? I want to share a story of Nurse Katie. Okay, she was an, she was uh, the chief. I don't know what they call the chief nurse in ER in Dubai when I was living over there. And she's a Canadian nurse, and she came to me. I don't know how she her friend referred her to me. She didn't really know. Oh no, we met at a Canada Day party, and so she thought, well, maybe she I'd come and maybe. She, or she'd come to me, I could help her out. Well, I look at the energy. I see where the energetic blocks are. What does she need and help with? There was a few things, but she told me she hadn't had a date in 10 years. I'd say that was one of them. And I know she was having job and career problems or challenges with the employer and 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 morals and, and, and some ethic issues in Dubai There's and stress. Okay. Yes. Um, so I did what I do, and I don't know what I do sometimes. I'm clearing the energy. Let's leave it at that. Okay. I, I sit you down. I dial in. I'll tell you where there's a problem, where there's a block. I can relate to or explain, okay, what happened when you were seven years old? Um, and then we go into a dialogue, kind of like talking to a friend. I'm in a light trance. I don't remember it. I record them so that you can listen to it after because so much comes down. Sometimes I start talking really fast because the information really is coming through fast. So I dialed into her and I can't recall what exactly I cleared, but she contacted me like 10 days after and she goes, Amira, you're not going to believe this. But I went out with some friends and I met this guy and I haven't been apart from him since. Wow. To this day. It's been six years, her forever partner. Oh my gosh. In After love, not but... having a having yeah. a relationship for ten years. Yeah. Yep. That's the proof is in the pudding again with that. Like that's well where energy works. Yeah. Energy. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I 
she sent me a lot of ladies that were looking for love too. But I often say it doesn't work the first time for everybody. Sometimes you need four sessions. I, I don't know because we're, we're dealing with a quantum field. We're working interdimensionally, right? And right. It, it just so happened that I, I put the key in the slot and turned it and boom, it opened the treasures, right? Right. And so it, it's, it's, I'd like to say this work is extremely fast, but sometimes it takes a minute, you know? Right. And I think the key is that you re- released or removed some blockages. And then for her, that was all about having, you know, she came for several reasons, but the immediate shift could be seen in her ability to have a connection with a man. Absolutely. And, and friendships. And it seemed like people were noticing her different. She didn't do anything per se, but she said, people are telling me I look more radiant. I just look fresher. I look more approachable. So her vibration had shifted so much that it was immediately noticeable. Now, with the princess, let me tell you a fun story. Um, This was amazing because this woman contacted me. I didn't know who they were. Um, This was while I was living in Dubai also. Um, All I knew is a black SUV came to pick me up, blacked out windows, and we were driving for a long time going to wherever we were going. I had no idea it was a princess. And we were going to the royal family uh, palace. And so after an hour and a half driving in the desert, we get to this place. And after a long (laughs) sort of uh, process of getting to know each other and politeness and ceremony of tea and dates and cookies, then coffee and then lunch and then, oh my gosh, it just went on and on. We finally got to the meat and potatoes. We went into the guest bedroom and I started processing with her and looking at where the energy is. So when I was looking at her, I said, what happened to you at 18 years old? And she said, oh, my gosh. She goes, I cried for two weeks. I said, well, what happened? She goes, I was planning to get married to one man. And my family told me I had to marry the prince. She was the cousin to the royal family. She didn't want to marry to the immediate royal family because her days of any sense of freedom would be gone. Yeah. Or liberty. So she cried for two weeks. And basically what I saw was she'd shut off her baby maker. Oh, it's, an energy, yeah. it's a creative center in the second chakra that she literally shut off. And she had three children, but the doc, she, they were all in vitro fertilization. And, you know, as a, as a senior royal member, we're talking her husband's number three in the country. You can bet they checked me out before I got to the palace. Right. Right. Yeah. So I just want to put that out for people that I've been vetted. <laughs> um, <laughs> vetted by the royal family of Dubai. There you go. By you the need... secret service in the Middle East, okay? Yeah. Does so it, it we... doesn't get much harder to get vetted than that, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when that happened, she had a fourth in vitro, and it failed, and that's why they reached out to me, and her sister Oh, family. okay, okay, because she was trying to so have a fourth So I'm thinking, child. oh, great, yeah. Now they've got the fourth one lined up, the top medical team's money, can buy are coming from Europe they got it all set up she's going to start some hormone therapy and she just wants me to make sure it happens right I'm like great this is really great my life is on the line now I know it the pressure's (laughs) on yeah yeah exactly so I told her I said you know we need at least six sessions okay I can't I'm thinking this is God's work I'm only going to facilitate your body coming into alignment right I can't take credit for this So I am the facilitator. I'm serving you by clearing the energy. That's all. And then we have to let go. As we, as we say, inshallah, in Arabic, it's like, God willing, it will happen. So after the fourth visit, when I would go back to the palace, because of high security and privacy, she would not do anything over the phone. Um, I go back and uh, this time she says, oh my gosh, Amira, my husband's coming home early on Thursday. And Thursday's like the Friday for us on the, in the Middle East. And she goes, he's coming home early. He's never done that in 15 years. And he's buying her all these gifts, which were over the top more than usual. And so all of these things, are these aches and pains she has in her body are disappearing. And she's all of a sudden feeling more passionate before she was going to bed with the kids. And now she's up till 
all hours of the night because she's interested in something she never had for herself. And that was trading currency. Yes. And she hired a coach. So she's, you know, learning all about it, but she's passionate. She's excited. I said, don't be surprised if you get pregnant before you start hormone therapy. So we finished our series. She called me about two weeks after our series and she goes, Amira, I have some news. And I go, yeah, you're pregnant. And she goes, well, I thought you were a crazy lady. I swear. <laughs> so you um, regenerated her fertility. Beautiful. Said, and none of all of her doctors could not believe it. And I said, you know, your husband should send me a bonus because I just saved him a couple hundred thousand dollars, you know. That's right. And that and well, and they could boy. well afford it too, right? She had a baby boy. Um, and well, afford it. That kid born into the, the family that he is will make about 50,000 US dollars a month for the rest of his life. Wow. Staggering. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, she couldn't believe it. She said, she said to me, Amira, you gave me the gift that nobody could give me. And that was the gift of being and feeling like a real woman. Beautiful. I hope you enjoyed both parts of the episodes featuring my guest, Amira Hall. Make sure you download, you share, and give us a five-star review. This is Cosmic Scene with Jill Jardine signing out, sending you healing spiritual vibrations through the quantum field. Duh.